Well, kia ora te whanau. Welcome to day 20 in our devotional journey through Acts. But before we begin, would you join me in prayer? We gladly confess that the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You opened your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. That we gladly and confidently confess. And yet, we notice your creatures, not well fed, but mired in hunger, poverty, and despair. And yet we notice the power of evil that stalks the best of us, the power of cancer, the dread of war, the sadness of death, be that a good death or a cruel one. And so we pray confidently towards you, but with footnotes that qualify. We pray confidently, but we do not deny in your presence the negatives that make us wonder. We pray amid honest reservations. Give us patience to wait, impatience to care, sadness held honestly, surrounded by joy over your coming kingdom, and peace while we wait, and peace at the least, at the last, that we may be peacemakers, and so your children. We pray in the name of your firstborn son, our peacemaker. Amen. Well, the passage we're exploring today comes from Acts chapter 5, verse 17 onwards, which says this. <clears throat> then the high priest and all his associates who were members of the party of the Sadducees were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said. Tell the people about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported, we found the jail securely locked, with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On hearing the report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss, wondering what this might lead to. Then someone came and said, look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts teaching the people. At that, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did not use force because they feared that the people would stone them. You know, when preparing for this reflection, I, I had to laugh when I was reading a commentary on this passage because in that commentary, the scholar talked about how at this time everyone seemed to struggle to know what to call this new Jesus movement that we're reading about in the book of Acts. Because it isn't actually until Acts chapter 11 that anyone begins calling this group Christians, meaning Messiah people. And this confusion around what to call this new movement well, one scholar suggested that it wasn't just the people who, at the time who were struggling, but seemingly that the angels were a bit unsure too. Because in this passage, we have the only time where this movement is called this life. Nowhere else is it called that. And it was described this way by the angel who freed the apostles from prison. You can almost imagine the angel's thought process, can't you? Oh man, I, how am I going to bring this message to the apostles when I don't even know how to describe the thing I'm telling them to tell others about? <laughs> Whatever it is, it's, it's, it's more than a belief, right? Because it involves one's whole life. With new loyalties, new family structures, new attitudes to property and, and wealth new sacred symbols and ways of worship. And this new life, it's different to that old life. So maybe I'll just call it that, this life. You know, 
as opposed to that life. Yeah, I think that'll do. I'll just call it this life. But though the angel's description of Christianity here is odd, it's also illustrative. Because it points to the fact that this faith, it's not just a belief, but a whole new way of living. When we allow the gospel message of Jesus' life, death, resurrection and ascension to shape every part of us. Which is why this life is this life and not that life. It requires us to fully leave the old so that we can fully embrace the new. And this all raises the question, doesn't it? Are there ways in which you haven't fully embraced this new life in Christ? Are there ways in which you're trying to live astride that life and this life? Trying to have a foot in both camps and just being left feeling dissatisfied as a result? Are there places in your life where that are yet to be shaped and transformed by the gospel? If so, then why don't you try doing something different? Pray an honest prayer and have an honest conversation. Bring it to God and seek the help and support of others so that you can experience the prison-breaking freedom that is found in this new life in Christ. I'll see you online or in person this Sunday from 10 a.m. God bless.